The standard enthalpies of formation are typically given for one temperature. Kirchhoff's law allows for the calculation of standard enthalpies of formation at different temperatures. This is the change in standard heat of reaction at a new temperature, T prime, is equal to the change in standard heat of a reaction at a known temperature, T, plus the change in the standard heat capacity at constant pressure for the reaction times the difference in temperature, where the change in the standard heat capacity at constant pressure for the reaction is equal to the weighted sum of the change in standard molar heat capacities at constant pressure of the products minus the weighted sum of the change in standard molar heat capacity at constant pressure for the reactants. For small changes in temperature, typically less than 100 degrees Kelvin, it can usually be assumed that the heat capacities are constant. Here is an example of using Kirchhoff's law to determine the enthalpy change of a reaction at a different temperature. What we're given is that we get the standard enthalpy of formation of gaseous water at 25 degrees Celsius is minus 241.82 kilojoules per mole. And what we want to do is find out its value at 100 degrees Celsius. What we're given is these different values, these, heat, these molar heat capacities at constant pressure for the various pieces of, of this reaction. And since we're talking about the standard enthalpy of formation, then that's why we have water, hydrogen gas, and oxygen gas. So starting off calculating this reaction, what we're trying to do is trying to find the standard heat at 373.15 or 100 degrees Celsius. And to do that, what we're going to do is take the heat of the reaction at 298.15 Kelvin. And what we're going to do is we're going to add to that the standard heat capacity at constant pressure for the reaction. And we're going to multiply that by the difference in temperature, 373.15 minus 298.15. And in this case, what we have is we know, we know that this change in temperature, well, that's just going to be 75 degrees. We know this heat of the reaction at 298.15 because that's negative 241.82 kilojoules per mole. And so what we don't have is this part in the middle, this change in the standard heat capacity at constant pressure for the reaction. And so that's what we're going to then now determine. Now the reaction that we're working with here is, since this is a heat of formation, we've got hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas, and that's going to water, or gaseous water. So that means we can calculate this change in molar or in heat capacity at constant pressure, and we'll use this sum or this weighted sum heat capacities of formation, or the molar heat capacities of formation of the products, minus the weighted sum of the heat capacities of formation of the reactants. And so in this case, we're just going to use the values that were provided in the problem itself. So we have in our reaction, and I should make sure that I balance this, I have to make sure I have a one-half in front of the oxygen since I've only got one oxygen in the water. And so in this case, we've got our products. We've got one water, and that the heat capacity for the water is the 33.58 joules per Kelvin per mole. So here's 33.58. And from that, I'm going to subtract off. I've got one hydrogen. The heat capacity for hydrogen that I'm going to be substituting in is... 28.84 and to that I'm going to be adding on well here I've got one half of an oxygen molecule so then one half of the heat capacity 29.37 I then do the algebra within the square brackets 33.58 minus 28.84 minus 14.685 what that leaves me with is negative 9.945 joules per mole Kelvin. And I know it's in joules because that's just what the values that I use to calculate are in joules per mole Kelvin. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just convert it into kilojoules because that's just what this standard heat of formation is written in. 
So then I can write this as negative 9.945 times 10 to the minus 3 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And I'm just going to take that number, and that number is going to be the number that I'm going to substitute in for this question mark here that I had before. That means then I can then quickly then do this calculation where I'm at a minus 241.82, and to that I'm going to add this negative 9.945 times 10 to the minus 3, and to that I'm going to multiply that by 75. And when I do this calculation, what I end up with is negative 242.6 kilojoules per mole. Now taking a step back again to try to understand what is it that we just calculated, we can see that this value at 100 degrees Celsius is not very different from the value at 25 degrees Celsius. And in this case, we did also assume that the heat capacities didn't change or that they remain constant over this, this relatively small temperature difference. What can see though is that as this temperature difference gets bigger, in this case it was just 75 degrees, but as this temperature change gets bigger, then that means that this result is going to also deviate more and more. And so the idea behind this is that we can see or we can start to get a sense of how much these things change over a given temperature that then gives us an idea of how precise we need to be or if we know the precision that we need to have when we do with our experiment, we can then understand what are the errors that we can then tolerate when doing these calculations. Here is a summary of what was covered in this lecture. The heat transferred at constant pressure is the change in enthalpy of a system. The molar heat capacities at constant volume and constant pressure differ only by the gas constant. Hess's law, which is a statement that enthalpy is a state function, can be used to determine the standard enthalpy of a reaction and is quantified as the weighted sum of the root products minus the weighted sum of the reactants. And finally, Kirchhoff's law enables standard enthalpies to be determined at different temperatures depending upon the heat capacities of the species involved.